explain what you're looking at. I have obviously a camera rig here, some of you will be taking photos of me at the time. Uh, and that rig is a stereo rig, and this is the Technoprop's headgear that uh, in fact is uh, based, I guess, in historical things from Mobile Camera Avatar. But this is stereo uh, vertically mounted, so two cameras are aimed at my face, and that gives a stereo pair. And you might say, why don't we get a stereo pair left and right? But in fact, having a stereo pair up and down gives us something that doesn't get occluded by my nose. Okay, so that's being fed out of this into one computer, and that computer does a stereo reconstruction on me, obviously in real time, but more than just doing the point stereo reconstruction, it then solves. So now we're using uh, deep learning and logic. For deep learning to work, you have to give it training sets. So in Sydney, uh, we had some of the guys from Cubic Motion who are on this part of the project. They came down to uh, Sydney and we worked together to produce some training data, which gave the correct facial expressions of what I'm doing. So what the computer is doing right now is both tracking and solving my face and literally working out stuff based on uh, AI, deep learning. That's our first AI lead engine. Okay, now that image is at the moment just a bunch of points and levers to drive a fax rig, but not actually the fax rig yet. That's in another computer. So we've got one computer, bear with me on this. Now we're gonna to go to the second computer. The second computer has the rig of my face. That was made by Three Lateral uh, in Serbia. They make some of the best uh, feature rigs in the world, like my face. That was built, that rig, off data that they were given from our WikiHuman team. Now the WikiHuman project is a group of researchers, of which I'm one, that decided that it'd be a really good idea to help develop a bunch of information that we could all use to produce this kind of material and then give it to you guys. So we're giving away the data, there's no copyright to my face, hope that's okay, but that's what we're giving away. Okay, so now the cubic computer, the second one, is using the information that the wiki humans got from taking me into a light stage. And the light stage was at USC ICT. Uh, Paul the Bevix group there did a light stage scan of my face. And that was the base for the geometry and the facts expressions that I have. Didn't give me any eyes though. <laughs> so to get the eyes, what we did is we went to Disney Research in Zurich and they actually scanned my eyeballs. So my eyeballs are from Europe, my face from California. And then we took all that information, gave it uh, to the guys at uh, uh, Three Lateral who built the rig and there you go. Now, the rig's got to be driven at this stage by the cubic stuff and we could stop there, except for you guys want to see it, right? So for you to see it, what you're getting is actually an image that's coming from a third computer that's just driving uh, your stuff. Okay, that computer, we then have one on the other side. Now right now, uh, we've got uh, Wayne sitting on the other side. I'm gonna cross to him in one second. He has his own computer that's doing his face tracking, but now he's using a you know, face mask for VR. So he has, in fact, two drilled holes that allow special cameras to be in his head here, which are gonna give him eye tracking. He's got cameras underneath that's giving him mouth tracking, and a whole separate computer taking in those four cameras is giving us uh, Wayne's face, which you'll see in one moment. And then his second computer gives him VR. So now we've got five computers, all of these 10 cores, uh, 32 gig running 1080 Ti cards from uh, Falcon. We love these Falcon computers, they're terrific. Okay, that would be where we could stop, except we want our guests to join us. So in a second, I'm gonna cross to uh, Wayne, and in addition to you guys out there, our four guests will join us in the Sydney studio. <sighs> Does that make sense? Any questions? All clear? All right, well, I think we're in a position to cross to Wayne in the Sydney studio now. So uh, can I just check with Mission Control? Do we think we can cross now to Sydney? Can we cross now to Sydney? Do you think we're good to go? Okay, so let's uh, go on with the show. Well, Wayne, thank you so much for joining us. So, uh, unfortunately, Wayne, I can't hear you right now because it's a little hard to get to Sydney, but uh, I'm sure that the audio team will fix that in one second. See if I can hear you from the outside. Oh, they've turned off his, your mic. Let's turn your mic back on. How's that, Mike? I can, <laughs> I can now hear you, that's terrific. You know, just before I start this, the, uh, the coolest thing about VR 
is that you've given me more here than what I have in real life. Uh, I think that's actually not true, but that's very kind of you to say so. <laughs> so tell me, when did you first join uh, Weta? I joined about 22 years ago. Wow, what was the first film you worked on? The first big film I would have worked on was uh, The Frighteners with Peter. So, I guess the thing we're really interested in is what's your opinion of virtual humans and like, leaving aside real time for a second, which we're in, do you feel like it's something that is now an integral part of filmmaking? I think so, because um, we've worked out that we can't kill actors by putting them into dangerous places, so we tend to replace them a lot with uh, digital versions of themselves. Kind of like my hands here. <laughs> You're enjoying uh, playing around with your digital hands, I see. Well, yeah, except you told me I could do a rude gesture with this, and I haven't worked it out yet. Yes, there's a, there's a bit of a competition. We give out free t-shirts if you can work out how to give me the finger during the show. No, that's not quite right. <laughs> My best attempt. Well, that's all right. Um, so tell me, what are the applications, do you think, for real time? Because this is a move, I guess, to virtual production. You guys have a lot of use for doing real time, sort of, I guess, on a motion capture stage. But generally speaking, there's an interest in moving to real time, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, there is. And I think part of that is because I think creating art needs to be instant. And one of the things that we've always suffered from is that generating realistic images takes a long time. So if someone wants to make a change and iterate, then you know they take a while before they get their feedback back and that's just not great. So if you can close that loop in and make things faster, you can iterate more and I think you get a better result. I mean Wet has done a lot of really interesting work, in particular I noticed on the last few films you've gone to a spectral renderer. Some of that stuff is like obviously not likely running in real time, but part of your actual plan is to have both the spectral renderer and gazebo, right? So you've got this sort of real time aspect that can scale seamlessly between the real time and the non real time, which is the obviously the level you have to hit for the quality of work you go to. That's that's right. You try to combine both. So if someone's maybe doing lighting work, they can use a real time renderer to get a lot of the clock out, or the work in black design work out, and then that passes through to the offline render of the spectral render that you're talking about. And assuming that your illumination models and things like that are pretty much the same, or uh, you sort of work well together, you should hopefully get back a result that's um, what you've just seen in real time. I guess one of the fundamental things that's happened is the idea of post-production is no longer post-production, is it? I mean, like, when would Weta start? You'd start at the same time as the DOP, right? Yeah, we start right at the beginning. It's like, yeah, we don't really do post-production anymore. We do production. And if you think about a show that's got 1,200 visual effect shots inside it, say, which isn't unusual these days, a huge portion of that movie is digital now. So absolutely, you're doing production. I think one of the things that's interesting is that what we notionally think of as visual effects isn't a visual effects, right? Like it's wardrobe, it's uh, hair and makeup, it's uh, environment work, like this. There's all the other departments, lighting, um, even editorial comes in with the way that you provide, you know, post visits. So. Yeah, that's, that's right. I mean, if you're going to create a digital human, someone like yourself, for example, we need to deal with your clothes, we need to, you see, we need to deal with your hair, makeup, everything like that. So. So, so you become, you have these like virtual costume departments and makeup artists and, uh, and everything else you find in a life set. So, in terms of virtual hernia, you've done with some work with obviously Andy Circus and those teams are really, really experienced. Do you think that normal actors will have trouble accommodating virtual actors in a kind of more real-time sense? Or would it help them to be able to react to somebody and have like a more immediate kind of response than a tennis ball? I, I think it probably depends actor to actor. Um, I've got, I always thought it pretty hard to react to a tennis ball, but I've seen some actors do it really well. And I think others have a harder time with virtual representations, you know, it's, they like to actually talk to another human being. So it's, a, it's an ongoing process to see how all this works. So I guess the big question is, if we 20 years ago were like not able to render something in real time, that can now be in real time, is it reasonable to think, like, say, Toy Story, which, when it came out, was two hours of frame, or, you know, now it's able that same quality to be real-time. 
do we think that 20 years is a planning horizon for being able to say do what you do at the level of a Valerian or an Apes? Is that sort of where you'd be real time or do you be quicker than that? In other words, are we accelerating or not? Um, I don't know. It's a very good question actually. I'm just trying to, trying to think because 20 years seems to have flown by to be honest with you. Um, I, my, my gut reaction is as fast as we make rendering, people like me will just chuck more into the frame to slow it back down again. So we are um, we're constantly at war with the rendering engineers to make their life miserable. The, uh, the size of the render time is pretty impressive at Weta, I must say. And so in terms of the real time stuff, or perhaps even just generally speaking, is virtual humans the hardest thing to crack? I mean, if you had a look at a script, is like a virtual character the hardest thing that could be tossed at you? I, I think so. I think a lot of people um, sort of offer up criticism of digital characters, you know, in, in a range of movies. And all I would say to that is, you know what? They're really hard, really, really hard to do. Because we look at people all the time. And we're just used to seeing people's faces and the thousands of little subtle things they do. And that's just a really hard problem to crack. Yeah, on some of the work you guys have done lately, I've noticed that the subtlety in the eyes and the almost like the moisture in the eyes and stuff, it's like that's what's giving the performance. In the old days, we used to be like, oh, the eyes aren't big enough or whatever. But now it's almost like render details that are giving the emotional aspect. Yeah, I think it's always about the eyes, the character. You know, it's, if they, I think when people talk about the uncanny belly and other terms like that, I think it's usually the eyes they're reacting to. They just sort of, maybe they're wooden, they're dead, they're not moving around. And as you said, it's a combination of things. The movement through to the moisture. I, I guess my thing though is it's not so much that it's the eyes itself, though I agree with you, but it's just that the level of subtlety isn't like something you could get off a play, play bust. It has to be like quite finessed at what you're looking at before you can then judge whether you're getting that performance as an animator or somebody that's interpreting that of a motion uh, capture session. That's true. In fact, I'll tell you a really, real tricky problem with the eyes. If you're, if you're an animator and you're animating eyes and they're looking over in this direction, <laughs> and then I go and render it and I add refraction to that eye, you might find that something looks over in this direction. And you start to su suffer all sorts of tricky problems like that to work out. So you are sitting here as the first person that's come ever to this kind of virtual environment. So firstly, do you like my set here in Sydney? It's pretty flash. It's a lot nicer weather than I get back in New Zealand. It would be rubbish and raining and probably polar bears wandering around at the moment. And, and I guess the next question is, you, you and I have done interviews together. Is this mm. off-putting? Is it okay? How do you feel it? Well, firstly I'd say is your questions today are a lot less tricky than what you usually throw at me. So I appreciate that. Um, but no, it's quite good. It's like I can see this character in front of me, we're interacting, and I think uh, over a fairly short time, you sort of your brain calibrates to, to actually thinking that I'm talking to this guy right here. <laughs> My well, if, <laughs> if we could give Wayne a round of applause for being the first guinea pig to come here into the virtual studio in Sydney, thank you so much. We're going to reset in a second. We're going to have uh, Oscar winner Ben Grossman coming in. But if you want to bug Wayne for some really great stuff, he'll be uh, on the other side. I want to thank our guests that have been sitting in the VR. And if those of you want to come up this end, I'm going to be throwing away some free t-shirts. Thanks so much, guys. We'll be back in like five minutes.